Hey guys, my name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac, and today's show is all about the Gato Audio FM8 stand mount speaker. Now, Gato Audio is much better known for their electronics than their speakers, and I reviewed their Amp 150 and the, their uh, DIA 400 integrated amplifiers last year, and I really loved them. So they said, hey, you know, we do speakers. Steve, why don't you do some of our speakers? I said, okay, so here we are with the FM8. And, well, as I unboxed them and I lifted them up from the boxes, I was mightily impressed just with the build quality of these beasts. They're little, but they're heavy. They weigh about 20 pounds each. The, the cabinet feels positively inert. When you wrap your knuckles against it, you just get the bruised knuckles. I know it's a cliche, but when I inquired what's going on with the cabinet, they sent me these pictures well, it's a constrained layer construction. So instead of the usual MDF cabinet, well, this one is MDF, but it actually has two different thicknesses of MDF of different densities. And between those two layers is basically a tar damper, dampening material. So it's very solid, very inert, and it's very impressive for the price, which is a lot less than I would have thought. It's 1,095 euros a pair which converts to around $1,230 a pair right now, because obviously the, the currencies fluctuate. Uh, so, yeah, I, I assumed when I was unboxing these things that they were a lot more money. So that was a very pleasant surprise. And they are made in Denmark. What else can I tell you? Well, first, the sound. The sound is beautiful. The sound is luxurious. There's a comfort factor to the sound that's it's different. It does stand out from a lot of other speakers. It's around its size and price. Uh, I'm going to get more into that, but I would describe it as, well, warm, rich, beautiful sound. Not super high res, not, uh, that's not about shouting detail at you. It's more about, well, to use the old fashioned word, the musicality of the sound. And this is a very musical, very easy to listen to speaker. Now the tweeter, the tweeter is a 38 millimeter ring radiator type design. Now, which means that the center of the, of the tweeter is attached to the magnet, the pole piece, uh, which is there, it's done that way to lower distortion. Now, when I put up pictures on Facebook and Instagram a little while ago, a lot of people said, hey, Steve, you dented those tweeters. No, that's, that's the way they looked. Anyway, so the tweeter is, that's the tweeter. And then for the woofer, the woofer is a 150 millimeter mineral filled cone. It's basically a plastic cone. Uh, both tweeter and woofer are made by SB Acoustics, uh, two uh, Gato Audio specifications. Now, the crossover, look at that crossover. Um, those are Janssen capacitors and inductors. Uh, Again, above the norm, above, above what's expected for a speaker in this price class. Now, round back, well, round back, you'll see the rear port, and it is a ported design, and some very, very healthy looking binding posts, by wire binding posts. So, between the, the, the port and the connectors, you'll see something you never see on other speakers, and they're, they're essentially tone controls. Uh, uh, labeled as detail and focus. As for what focus and detail are actually doing, well, they're tone controls. Focus offers two options, plus or minus one half a dB from 600 hertz to 1200 hertz, and detail, plus or minus a half a dB from 5K to 20K. As for uh, some specifications, well, it is a four ohm rated speaker, meaning you should really use an amplifier that's happy driving 4 ohm loads. And the sensitivity uh, spec is on the low side, it's 85 dB. So plan on using an amp that puts out at least 100 watts into 4 ohms. Uh, and that's what I did. I actually used a MyTech Brooklyn, which is 250 watts a channel, and along with a Pass Labs HPA1 headphone amp, which I use as a preamp. The DAC was a Denifraps Aries, not an Aries 2, just a plain vanilla Aries. And my source for most of my listening was an Oppo Blu-ray Blu player. The speaker is sold with a 
five-year warranty and is sold uh, direct worldwide, so you get a 30-day trial period. And if you don't like this beer, you can send it back and get a full refund. Now, my samples were finished in gloss white, but it is also available in gloss black uh, and also gloss walnut. They've recently added satin finishes, so there's a satin white and a satin black option. So there you go. Oh, and the trim rings, or the metal rings around the drivers, you can get those in basically plain aluminum finish or also black. So a lot of options there to decide how you want these speakers to look. So for my, for my first listening sessions, I played some Kodo drummer albums. Kodo drums are big Japanese drums. And right away, the FM8 distinguished itself as a speaker that A, does definitely not need a subwoofer, unless you're into really, really, really deep bass. But these speakers, uh, bottom end is solid, impactful, nice detail. Uh, on the warm side of neutral, this is a very big, round sounding speaker. Round meaning full, in, in this case. And then the next one was this one, <laughs> Van Morrison's Moon Dance. Does it get more classic rock than that? I mean, what a great record. His voice is amazing. The arrangements are amazing. It's like taking a warm bath listening to this recording over the FM8. It's just so, I don't know, it just puts me in a really, really good place. And I'm a huge Van Morrison fan. I've seen him a bunch of times. But if I had to take one, album, this would be the one. And I guess that's why I played it for, on the FM8. And uh, it just sounded right. It sounded natural and believably real. That's what I was looking for, and that's what I got. As I was jumping from one album to the next, I switched over to the Kef LS50 Meta. You know, obviously, it's a reference speaker of mine, and it's, a, it's around the same price. It's $1,500 a pair. And the Kef definitely had more leading edge speed and transient attack. It was a livelier sounding speaker, a little more focused sounding speaker, less full sounding speaker, less bottom end warmth than I was getting from the FM8. But the LS50 is definitely a more transparent sounding design. One can, more or less contemporary recording that I loved is Peter Gabriel's Scratch My Back. This was done in 2010. And it's him covering some of his favorite songwriters like Paul Simon and Lou Reed and Tom York, uh, among others, uh, and David Bowie. Oh, his version of Heroes, which is the first track on the album, is so amazing. He's so expressive. And it's not a rock band recording. It's done with an orchestra. And the arrangements are phenomenal. And the sound quality is amazing. And the dynamic range is just outstanding. It really is good. It's, it's practically an audiophile recording by any, by any measure. As I was deep into Scratch My Back, I decided to pull out the ELAC Unify reference speakers, which are around $1,200 a pair and about the same size, except that that one is a three-way design with a coaxial tweeter mid-range and a separate six and a half inch woofer. Uh, that's a great speaker, and it, again, it was more transparent, more detailed than I was getting out of the FM8. But I will say the FM8's sound staging, because this recording has an amazing sound stage, it was just so open and big and spacious. The uh, Unified Reference was a little smaller, but more focused, more, a more precise sounding presentation. It was funny. He, Peter Gabriel's voice had more dimensionality over the FM8, but over the Unify reference, it was more like he's right there kind of sound. The focus precision was a little better on the Unify reference. All right, so now it's time for, so Steve, what do you really think? And I think there's a lot to love about the Gato Audio FM8 stand mount speaker. It's beautiful. It's beautifully made. You just feel this quality coming off of this speaker. And the sound quality is beautiful, luscious, rich, round, just gorgeous sound. Um, now, it does need power. As I said earlier, give it at least 100 watts 
you know, an amplifier that is 100 watts into 4 ohms capability. More is nice too. And I did mention it earlier, but I should have, is you can't put this speaker near a wall. And that's not just because it has a rear port. It just, it's making enough bass and mid bass that it's going to get boomy if you put it close to a wall. And I would say a minimum of 18 inches away from the wall is a good starting point. So give it room to breathe and it will just open up. Like I said, the sound stage is freaking big, big and spacious, just very nicely done. And now we move on to the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This one comes from Ulif. I am sure I'm mispronouncing your name and I apologize. He is an expat living in China for over a decade, currently working in the tropical city of Sanya on the island of Hainan. Anyway, the amplifier is a Luxman L550LX Mark II. The turntable is a gold note pianosa with a Donatello red cartridge. Phono preamp, gold note PH10. CD transport slash DAC is a Accuphase DP450. Music streamer, Rune Nucleus, and the speakers, can't miss those. Those are JBL L100 Classic. Then there's a secondary system in that picture. The preamp is an SPL Phonature 2, and the active speakers, I'm not familiar with this brand, PSIA-17. Thanks so much. We are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. You already knew that, right? But I have to feel like, I feel like I have to say that. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying these shows, and you might not yet know, so I'm going to break it to you, <laughs> that I do have a podcast, which is not the same thing as this show. People keep thinking it's just me putting these episodes up as podcasts. That's not what it is. They're unique for the most part. There is one that's basically this one, but the others are all original material for the podcast. And you can hear it on my own uh, podcast website, which I will link to below. And you can hear it on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and uh, iHeartRadio, you know, the usual suspects, uh, Amazon Music. Wherever you hear podcasts, it's probably there. I don't want to forget, this would be just wrong, I don't want to forget to mention my Patreon, which is if you want to help the show out, and keep it going. And we're coming up on five years. That'll happen later this summer. And a big part of the reason I've been able to continue all this time is the support of my patrons. If you'd like to join, that would be terrific. But you can find it at patreon.com slash audiophiliac, and there is a link to that directly below. And last but not least, hey, if you like these episodes, please give me a like, hit that like button, and subscribe. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.